Your code is the most blunt multiplier on your productivity as an engineer. If you can code five times faster, you're a 5X engineer. Simple, right? Normally, you increase your coding output through writing and reading code over days, months, and years. But all that is about to change, and you and I know exactly why. Imagine if you had a tool that enabled you to build websites, servers, CLI tools, and any type of application 5x faster in just a couple of weeks or days. This is the promise of AI coding assistance. AI coding assistants are the largest multiplier on our productivity to ever exist. You can see here in this simple coding example, I created a brand new function with two prompts, ran the code and it successfully ran, no issues at all. Shout out to Ader, shout out to AI coding assistants, shout out to the great LLM technology that's upon all of us today. It's incredible tech with tons of potential, but you may have noticed AI coding assistants haven't really taken off yet. Why is that? The world is built on code. So those writing 5X clean code should be winning, right? Why haven't AI coding assistants really taken off yet? That's because there are big problems with AI coding assistants right now and one massive hidden cost no one's talking about and maybe no one will talk about except for us on this channel right now. Let's dig into what's missing from the current AI coding experience and discuss the big reasons why it's critically important to keep a sharp eye on the AI coding assistant space. Let's quick run this test. Let's start by answering a simple question. What is an AI coding assistant? So I wanna make it absolutely clear and set some standards for true AI coding assistance. I'm talking about boots on the ground software that Junior Plus engineers can use to create, read, update, and delete code. If you can't run CRUD on your code, it's not an AI coding assistant. It's not a true AI coding assistant. So let's run through some examples. There are things like GPT engineer, chat dev, crew AI, autogen, cursor, and there are things like Ader, right? So let's use these as examples. So which one of these are true AI coding assistants and which ones are not? So we have crew AI and autogen, which are building blocks that can modify code if directed to. These are building blocks that allow you to build multi-agent systems that solve problems on your behalf. We've gone in depth into autogen in the past. This is really powerful technology, but this is not a standalone true AI coding assistant. We then have GPT engineer and chat dev, agent GPT. You've heard a lot of these. These are fun tools that get a lot of coverage in the AI tech news hype cycle, but always end up losing steam. These tools don't meet the standard for what a true AI coding assistant is. So what is the standard, right? Let's set some standards. What is the standard for true AI coding assistants, okay? Let's talk about this. True AI coding assistants must meet these three attributes to be useful for value creating engineers. So let's dive into these. If you've used AI coding assistants, definitely let me know if you agree with these three standards. They must work on existing code bases. They must have a file context mechanism. We'll dig into what exactly that is in a second. And they must be iteratively controllable, okay? So let's break these down, right? So must work on existing code bases. If the tool doesn't work on existing code bases and can only spin up new apps or new prototypes, it's not a true AI coding assistant, right? This is where a lot of the cool flashy tools fall out of the race, right? A lot of the GPT engineers, chat dev, star GPT, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but these are not built to be true AI coding assistants writing code on arbitrary code bases at any time, anywhere. Let's talk about the second standard. They must have a file context 
mechanism. So if files cannot be referenced in your coding prompts, you're limited to editing a single file. And it's quite obvious when you say this out loud, but you cannot build anything substantial with just a single file. The AI assistant must look at relevant files to satisfy your prompt in order to be a true AI coding assistant. It must be iteratively controllable. A lot of tools follow the race here as well. AI coding assistants are going to get things wrong, just like you and I get things wrong. But how do we correct it? We iterate. Our AI coding assistants must be able to iterate as well. They need some type of conversation thread, some type of memory of things that have happened, of errors that they have made so that they can correct them, right? If you cannot iterate from bad code to good code, from buggy code to running code, we have to disqualify the tool. This is critical for the coding experience. Iteration is at the center of great engineering, great design, and great product development. Now that we have a solid standard for what a coding AI system is, let's talk about problems. So let's look at these problems through the lens of what I consider to be the best two AI coding assistants right now. Let me go ahead and just jot these down. So best two AI coding assistants in 2024 Jan. Many of you already know it's going to be cursor and on top of that, it's gonna be Aider. So let's look at some of these problems through these AI coding assistants. So there are five massive problems blocking AI coding assistants from giving us massive 5X level value as engineers. Let's talk about what exactly they are. So just top to bottom, five big problems with AI coding assistants, file management, accuracy, speed, security, and then lastly, we're gonna talk about the big ticket item that no one's talking about and that technology tends to always bring with it. This is gonna be a really big hitter. We're gonna talk about this at the end. Let's first break down these five issues. Let's open up uh, Let's open up Cursor, okay? So same code base, we're here in Cursor. So if you're not aware, Cursor is an AI first code editor. Basically it's a fork of VS Code with some really crucial features that allow AI pair programming right in the application. This application right now is at the top of their game in my opinion. They are definitely threatened by all the work that's happening right now with GitHub Copilot. I think that they're in the race for now. We'll see how that progresses. Huge shout out to the Cursor devs. Let's keep working here. So let's talk about file management. A big problem with AI coding assistance is file management. In Cursor, we can select everything, we can hit Command K, and then we can start editing our code, right? Let's drop down the GBT 3.5 just for speed. Right now, in order to get the full context of your code base, in order to accurately add context to what you want to add to your prompt, you need to be able to reference files. Cursor does this with this at symbol, and then you can reference your files, code, documentation, and other things. We're just gonna do at, and then we're going to say test, Dot test dot ts and now we've added the context of our test file and so now we can see this here now our ai coding assistant can make edits to the index.ts file with the knowledge of the test.test.ts file and it's best to do this the opposite way so let's open up the test file let's highlight everything here and then let's add index.ts as a reference and now let's say now we can you know kind of browse through this file which is really cool now let's go ahead and add the test for the other function right prefix files in dir let's go ahead and say add test for this okay this is gpt 3.5 let's see how it does so you can see there it added the file it's going line by line. So it looks like all we have right now is this single line change. Let's add a follow-up instruction. This taps into standard number three that I mentioned. It must be iterative. You can see here, cursor did not actually create the test. All it did was add this. So what we're gonna do here is add a follow-up instruction, write the test. So now you can see it's adding. And now when I explicitly said in a follow-up command, write the test, it went ahead, it's written the test. It added a little bit of junk here, that's fine. I'm gonna hit accept. And you can see here, I'll remove this. It's got the test. Let's open up bun. We'll run test on test.test.ts. We'll run it. And you can see here successfully, the AI coding assistant wrote the test for us. Previously, without the AI coding assistant, I would do this by hand, maybe try to copy over some of the previous code. With AI coding assistants, I did absolutely nothing. I wrote two semi sentences that detailed what needed to happen. One prompt and a follow up prompt using GPT 3.5. If you use GPT 4, I'll bet you that would have one shotted. This is file management, right? And why is this a problem? Because look at what I just had to do, right? I'm only operating in two files. You reference the entire file, 
and then you hit add and you have to individually add every file that's relevant to completing this prompt. If you have a file that has five, 10, 20 imports, that's going to get really crazy, right? The big race for a lot of these AI coding assistants is can they manage your files properly? Can they reference the files you need in every single prompt? File management is one of the biggest problems of AI coding assistants right now. So what's the second problem, right? The second problem is accuracy. Um, just as you saw, we had an issue there with the GPT 3.5 model. It just kind of went through and it didn't complete the code. I can, you know, keep prompting and, you know, kind of force an error here, but I think you get the point. These GPTs, these AI coding assistants, they're still error prone. And basically, you know, if you're using GPT-4, you can expect one in every maybe five generations will just be straight up wrong. This is a combination of learning how to prompt properly and adding reference files, but it's also just a limitation of the strength of the models against the complexity of the task you're trying to accomplish right we'll talk about solutions to these problems in just a moment here but let's look at speed next right so speed isn't a hard blocker but it definitely is something that you have to consider right the reason i switched over to the gpt model and cursor here so if we highlight everything we go back to gpt4 and we run a prompt add another test for add to files and dir right so if we do this look at how much slower GPT-4 is. So not too bad, this is actually running a lot faster than normal. Uh, I am filming this on a Saturday morning. Normally, uh, this is gonna be a lot slower, especially using the top end model. Here, it looks like it's breezing through this pretty quickly, which is awesome. Okay, nice, so it looks like it created a, another test there. Let's go ahead and accept that. Let's take a look at what's going on there. Should not change file content if empty string is appended. Sure, let's go ahead and test that out, cool. So that passed perfectly. You can see there, that took a little bit of time. That wasn't a huge thing. Again, I'm not gonna harp on this too long. Speed is not a blocker, it's just an annoyance. But since GPT-4 is the best model, we have to wait to get the best results for now. In both Cursor and Ada, we can see how slow this process is compared to GPT-3.5. The big issue here is that every prompt has to hit their API, right? This is kind of an unprecedented piece of technology where we're doing so many requests and it's always hitting their API. And you know, if you use something like cursor, if you use something like Ader, you don't really know unless you can see the internal code, what is happening, how many prompts are actually firing off. So it's definitely important to monitor costs there, okay? Let's talk about security real quick. I'm not gonna harp on this too long either. Security is something that just is, comes along with the package right now. Just because we're relying on GPT-4 Turbo and a third-party application, you know, basically any tool, any AI coding assistant that's going to be good, you're going to have to just kind of commit to the risk of using their API. Your code's likely gonna be uploaded. You know, Cursor has this uh, setting here where you can explicitly say, you know, privacy mode, I've it enabled here. I probably don't need to do that for this particular, for this particular test code base, but I have it on by default, you know, privacy, especially working on proprietary software. I totally understand people not wanting to, you know, enable and just ship off their code to whoever AI coding system is watching and listening. I think there's a big concern that, you know, GitHub Copilot is doing that a lot right now. And it's just basically kind of reading up everyone's code and, you know, doing who knows what with it on the back end. So something to think about, security is definitely a problem of AI coding assistance. I think it's really clear in the minds of everyone using models for everything. The ideal scenario is to have a GPT-4 turbo level assistant right on your device. I think we're probably one, probably two or three years away from having that on device unless OpenAI innovates really hard to create a highly, you know, uh, encrypted on-device model. That would be really clutch. I would love to see that product come out, honestly. I think they would make so much money and, you know, engineers, product builders would really love just a clean, highly efficient, really fast on-device model. But again, those are limitations of the technology that we're facing today. They are just things that we can't do yet. We're still all working on getting these LLMs to be faster, smaller, more efficient, more accurate, et cetera. So security is another problem. And then a hidden problem that I don't think anyone's really talking about. Let's talk about this. This one is really unique. This is skill atrophy. So any new great technology helps us do things we know how to do faster and better. But this always comes at a cost, right? We always have to pay this cost. 
Okay, what's the cost of receiving a 5X tool that allows you to get somewhere that would normally take you years to get? The cost is just like using Google Maps. Before, you knew exactly how to drive to your friends, your families, the store, whatever. Now, with Google Maps, with Apple Maps, with this technology, you just turn on directions. You don't think about where you're going anymore. You just do what your assistant, what Google Maps is telling you to do. You just look and drive. It's faster, there's less mental overhead, it's more accurate than you because it can analyze the traffic. It's got some crazy A-star algo that it's running to get you there in no time, right? But that all comes at a cost. No one's thinking about how they got to where they are. And the same problem arises with AI coding assistants. I have found as I continue to use, as I continue to improve my prompting abilities, I am thinking less about code and I'm thinking more about the high level problem. That's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. That's a great thing, right? As I mentioned in the 2024 predictions video, I think great engineers are going to be moving up the stack, focus more on product, less on code, right? You know how to solve the problem. So you prompt it, the job is done, move on to the next thing, right? But that comes at a cost. As we use this technology, we're not going to be getting in the hard reps of building, of writing code, of having your boots on the ground, digging into the complexities, the annoyances, the beauty of coding. That's all slowly going to be prompted away. Skill atrophy is something that is serious and it's likely gonna fly overhead, but as you use AI coding assistance, you'll really start to really internalize this idea, right? You'll you'll think back to this video and think, yeah, I am slowly, you know, losing a couple of my chops. You know, it's not gonna happen all at once. It's not like you use AI coding assistant for like six months and you just can't code anymore. But you know, extend that time to, you know, three years and you're using this really efficiently, just like I have, I think you'll see that. I think other engineers will see that as well, but this is just the cost of great technology, right? Okay, so let's move on. So those are the issues, right? These are the five big issues right now with AI coding assistance. Really, it comes down to these, you know, some combination of these top four are the big, big problem, right? With file management being the biggest one, I think by far, and then with trails with accuracy speed. Let's talk about some of the solutions, right? So what are people doing to get around this? What are engineers building? How can we get around file issues, accuracy issues, speed issues, security? Are there solutions? Potential solutions. So, you know, let's talk about file management. So what do we have with file management? So we have explicit file context, uh, manual, add, remove, file context. And this is best shown via Ada, right? Right now, I only have the index.ts file. I can look at how many tokens that costs. I can see, you know, how much that's chewing up. Looks like basically nothing. I can drop that. I can add the test file, right? Then I can re-add the index file. And basically, this is the process for adding or removing files right now in the top tier AI coding assistance, right? You do it manually, essentially. And some of these tools are getting better at trying to guess what you need. I found it really hard to rely on these over hundreds and hundreds of files, right? So basically, that's the main solution right now. File management, and then, you know, we're just going to wait for tools to improve, right? So I don't like, you know, waiting for solutions to come out, but sometimes that's the best thing to do, right? Just sit and wait. Maybe you try to build some POCs to see and investigate how you can improve it a little bit. Basically, you just sit and wait, right? I found that the whole, you know, RAG uh, similarity search across the entire code base does not end up working very well. Um, so the explicit add and removal, you know, just like we have here, cursor has its own version, just like I mentioned before, you, you know, add symbol, you have files, and then you can just specifically reference the files. This is good for now. You can get a lot of value out of this. I do want to quick call out this cool plugin for Ader that was built that basically watches the open files that you have. So you can just do um, open Ader, whatever Ader command you have. And you can see here, if I close test.test, it automatically removes that from my context. So I found this to be really useful. I'm using this a lot right now. I'll link it in the description so you can check that out if you're interested. But this is super useful. I think I think this is a really simple idea that gets a, you know 80% of the value. If AI coding assistants just look at the open files that you have, since that is really the natural flow of things. Anyone that's watching, any you know anyone from the cursor team or Microsoft, anyone watching, I would spend some time here because really quickly I'm able to add and remove the files that I'm actually working on, which are exactly the files that I would want to prompt, right? Really simple, brilliant solution by um, the people surrounding the Ader ecosystem. A lot of good stuff happening around there in regards to AI coding assistance. So let's move on. That's file management, right? So wait for the files to improve, look for niche open file context, right? So good stuff there. Let's talk about accuracy. So wait for tools to improve. 
Uh, that's definitely just the right thing to do here. But also I would say practice. You need to be getting your reps in. I've beaten this idea over the head in the channel. The prompt is the new fundamental unit of technology. I'm just gonna write that down. The prompt is the new fundamental unit of programming. If you're not studying and learning the prompt, just like you have your data structures, if loops, for loops, you're going to be falling behind this year. I'm just saying it like it is. The prompt is the new fundamental unit of programming. Start prompting your code. Write less code, prompt more. Practice is a huge part of that. Since we're on the topic, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I have no idea how to get started with AI coding assistance, or I'm not sure how to progress with AI coding assistance, and you really wanna learn, drop a comment down below. I've been thinking about AI coding assistant tutorials and potentially courses to help engineers catapult their engineering to that 5X level into the future of AI engineering. I wanna help you capture those 5X coding assistant gains in the smallest amount of time. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. I think that's something that's definitely worth spending time on. So let's keep moving. So what do we do about speed? Uh, this is definitely just a kind of wait for tools to improve, but I also wanna call out this idea of experiment and see if you really need GPT-4 Turbo or if GPT-3 is enough, right? So this is something where experimenting with your prompts, experimenting with different models, I would definitely say don't try to test out local models to do real programming work right now. They're just too far behind. But definitely experiment with GPT-4 versus GPT-3. There are a lot of prompts and a lot of work that can be done with GPT-3. You know, you saw it earlier. I used Cursor to ship a GPT-3.5 prompt and it worked perfectly, right? So definitely experiment there. Let's talk about security. Use a local only solution. This is kind of like in the future because none of them can keep up. But I think here we're just kind of waiting for great local LLMs to catch up, right? So kind of just this is the same thing. This is nothing new. I'm not sure if there's a real solution for security right now other than, you know, bite the bullet and use uh, a cloud solution, right? And last, probably the most difficult to really address, pay close attention to the results of your prompts. We're naturally going to be moving up the stack. Great technology always deprecates jobs, skills, and entire industries. But I, I think the, the key is to, you know, don't fight this too much. Focus on the bigger picture, the prompt. Right. I think I think this is really the key, right? Focus on the new tool. Focus on the power of the new tool. Don't fight this too much. You know, maybe you're like digging into like leak code or something like that to keep your skill up. That's fine. I would honestly just be really focused on generating the most value from the prompt. This is it is the the new fundamental unit of programming. I would also say it's the new standard, the new baseline of what companies are going to be expecting of engineers. Like if you can't prompt some code, you're not getting hired, right? I think that's gonna be a true reality within the next five years. It's gonna be, you know, okay, prompt me some code. How would you write this prompt? How would you tweak this prompt? To reference the 2024 predictions video once again, I think prompts will really take off and really start to take up concrete roles. And we'll know that when we start seeing prompt related interview questions show up in interviews. So I think that's gonna be happening. I wouldn't focus on this too much, just kind of, you know, flow, flow with the AI. Yeah, don't fight it. Um, <laughs> it's funny that uh, GitHub Copilot is giving me that correction here. Um, there's probably something to be said about that, but we're just gonna move on. So, you know, those are the current solutions. Those are the current problems that I see and, you know, some potential solutions. I would definitely focus here and, um, you know, let's just wrap up. Let's talk about, you know, why do we care about AI coding? I think it's obvious if you made it this far in this video, it's probably obvious, right? Um, whoever cracks the puzzle is going to catapult into the future of engineering, right? Like we discussed, let, let, let's write this out, right? Let's be really explicit. So why care about AI coding assistance, right? So uh, whoever cracks this puzzle is going to catapult into the future of engineering. The world is built on code. And yeah, whoever can build the best code will the fastest will win in the long run, right? Basically you're writing more code, you're getting more iterations in, you're, right, you're building more products, you're building better products, and it's really just a race to the top. On a micro, on a personal level, if 
you're faster, you can build more. Once you finish your work, you can work more or um, relax more. It's, 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 it's pretty straightforward. You know, speed means you can do more. If you can do more, that means you have optionality. You can finish your work, you can work more, you can build other things, you can take it to the next level, or you can just chill and relax, right? Not everything has to be hustle, not everything has to be grind. Last thing I wanna to touch on here, you know, follow this channel, follow other value-centric channels to curate the best information so you can take actions on the trends that can seriously impact your life, right? Like AI coding assistance. They're just getting started. There's massive value here for us to unlock over the long run. I'm going to be covering them on the channel just like I have been for over half a year now. We're just getting started. I am optimistic that all of these key problems and more will be solved by, you know, a lot of the great engineering that's happening right now on Ader, Cursor, and other applications. I'm kind of shocked at how slow the AI programming space is moving. Maybe we're really ahead of the curve here on the channel, getting into it early, eating up a lot of the value before anyone else is getting there. But, you know, I'm I'm pretty, pretty shocked at how slowly people are moving on this stuff. So, you know, definitely join the journey. In the comments, let me know if you're interested in some type of like AI, coding assistant focused tutorials i can definitely do that i would love to give value in that way i'm really amped on this technology and i use it on a daily basis right i am fully moving toward that full agentic engineering experience where i am prompting ai agents are writing the code for me and i'm getting way more done way faster my engineering from today and from you know even just two years ago is night and day different and i want you to experience those gains as well so you know huge thanks for watching drop any comments you have any questions any concerns you know if you think there are other big problems with ai coding assistance definitely let me know i'd love to hear your thoughts huge thanks for watching especially if you made it to the end you know drop the like drop the sub i'll see you in the next one stay focused and keep building